Gary Simon of Corsetro, and welcome to the very last lesson that's a part of the Ethereum Smart Developers for Beginners 100% free course. So let's continue on here. And by the way, if you're jumping in and you're finding this video for the first time, make sure you watch from the beginning of the course. It's going to help you a lot more. All right. So the first thing that we want to do is we're going to make some adjustments to our actual form. So we no longer have just a single instructor names. We have a first name and last name. And so there's a couple of other adjustments we're going to make. So for instance, first under Corsetro Instructor, the H1, we're going to add a span ID of count INS. This is going to give us an instructor count for the number of counts. And we're also going to add two lines underneath our H2 section right here. And that's going to be a span ID of INS trans. This is going to hold or just display a block hash that's associated with the latest event. And then this is a line separator here. And then also underneath here, I'm just going to copy and paste out this name, which will have two more inputs. This is first name of F name ID and also an L name ID and a last name. And that's it for the actual uh, form adjustments. So now we have to make a couple of other adjustments uh, for the actual JavaScript. So the first line right here, var instructor event is Corsetro instructor. We actually changed that instructor name uh, to instructor info. If you recall, you can look at the remix IDE for the smart contract section of that. And then also we're going to pass in an empty object in the first argument. And then we're going to say, we only want the latest block. And I found that this was necessary in order for this event to work on the ROPS and test network. It worked in the test RPC, but not that, uh, not, not with the ROPS then. So next we're going to adjust actually the instructor dot watch method right here. And this right here, we only want to hide the loader if the last returned result is different, has a different block hash than the previous one. So that's why we're saving the block hash up here in this INS trans ID. And so what we'll do is put in if the result.block hash is not equal to the INS trans in the HTML, then we will hide the loader graphic right there. Next, we'll go ahead and put in INS trans dot HTML is the block hash we'll put in result dot block hash. All right, and then finally, we also have to adjust this line right here. So to do that, we're going to change this results.args.name that doesn't exist anymore to web 32 We're gonna put in result args.fname. And the reason we're using two ASCII is because we changed the string types to byte types. And when you do that, you don't get the actual string back anymore. You have to use the two ASCII function from Rub3 to make it readable. All right, so we have a first name, but we also have a last name. So I'm gonna copy this, I'm gonna move over here, and we're gonna put in a space, paste this in, and we'll put in L name. All right, simple. All right, and then finally, we're gonna make one last change here to the click event, or actually before that, we're going to reference our count instructors function. So corsetro.count instructors, our error and response are on success. We're going to say if success, then we're going to say count INS dot HTML is the response dot C that's where it resides the actual number of instructors. All right. And then finally, our click event has to be modified just slightly. The first argument of set instructor is not the name this time. It's the um, address. So web three dot ETH dot default account. All right. And then the second argument is age. And then we have F name and we'll copy this 
for L name right here. And we can get rid of this part as well. And then save. All right, awesome. So now at this point, let's just go back to our remix IDE. This is deployed. And we'll go to our smart contract here. And we will actually try to use it and see if it works. So let's go ahead and type in Gary Simon 34. That is my actual age. Oh, age is, val is not a function. Okay, so let's go find that. Oh, that's right. We have to put a dollar sign there. <laughs> uh, live coding. Got to love it. All right, so let's try that again. Gary, Simon, and 34. All right, we're gonna hit submit. And once this uh, pending goes away, this should go away as well right here and show the latest event of the instructor name and last name. Now this can take a little bit of time and so we can see 17 seconds has passed. It can go up to two plus minutes. So I will forward this if this takes a while. Okay, and there we go. You can see that it worked. Now I should note that I had some issues with it. So I had to pause. I actually restarted the browser. I reran my npm run dev command and then and only then did it actually start to work. Um, so if you're having issues with it, the loader not going and this not updating, Go ahead and make sure you do that. Um, so let's go ahead and do another update real quick. Stephanie Simon, put my wife who is 30. We'll hit update. This shows up off screen. We'll hit submit. And also notice, you know, this each time you make a state change or an update to your smart contract or your your writing to it, uh, it does cost a certain amount. So you know, we have 2.671 ETH. Once this approves, both that and the equivalent US dollar value will go down slightly. Not quite as much uh, as when you actually deploy the contract, but every time you make an update, um, you know, you're adding, for instance, uh, a new instructor to our case, in our case, then it will go down. All right, so now we can see that it's updated and it has worked. All right, so hopefully you learned quite a bit throughout this course. And so you could take that same contract and just change to the main Ethereum network in MetaMask and deploy it there using your real Ethereum because you will need actual Ether to deploy it. Um, and so, yeah, going through this, if you're a beginner, you should definitely have a solid footing now going forward uh, when creating your smart contract. So look out for more courses in the future. We've really just... I we touched basically the, the very beginner aspects of it, but there's a lot more to learn going forward. So keep an eye out on my Udemy channel or my website and my YouTube channel. All right, talk to you later.